More action and more battles on the track from the Thunder Sports series as we visit Rockingham Motor Speedway. Stay tuned to watch four classes from the series. This is Thunder Sport Plus. Yes, hello and welcome to Rockingham in Northamptonshire for round six of Thundersport Plus. Four rounds to go, including this one, and we have four races coming up for you in today's show. First up, the Motodex Pre-National 600, a class four. Riders that are yet to attain a national license, so the majority of them with the orange bibs on will be rookies. The rest have been racing for a few rounds, but they don't have a whole lot of experience, so... Probably 90% of the grid are yet to get a full season of racing behind them. James Shaw on pole in the gr on the green Kawasaki in the white leathers is your championship leader, but it's a good start from number 73 there, David Brooke, and the sky blue R6 of Don Gilbert. As they go into turn one, it's almost like a sit-up straight chicane. James Shaw loses some ground there, and I think that's Adam Clark who's just moved up into third place, but Don Gilbert, a, an electric start for him, and he will go into the hairpin here. Matt Dean in first place, double apex left-hander, David Brooks second, Adam Clark third, James Shaw in fourth place, and in fifth, that's Jamie Morris, number 199. But uh, Gilbert, who certainly in the last few rounds has been lifting himself up in the championship standings, he's up into fifth place at the moment. He's only a handful of points behind Adam Clark and Paul Westerdale. Uh, but it's got to be said that James Shaw is going to take some beating overall. He came into Rockingham with a 145 point advantage over David Brooke but at the moment it's Gilbert Brooke and James Shaw and James Shaw despite that bad start is getting back down to business here into the Tarzan hairpin and uh, great drive out of there superb drive for him as they head up towards the Brooke chicane it's not been named after David Brooke I should just point out but as it stands oh and Brooke just runs a bit wide there into his own chicane and then Gilbert it is that leads still from James Shaw. Shaw there just lining himself up to get some great drive under the start finish straight and he, he is indeed side by side with Gilbert almost but he just tucks back into the slipstream here as they head into turn one this uh, very quick chicane just sort of tip your bike left and then straighten it out so you don't actually get to visit the right hand side of the tyre not until Yentwood which is coming up in a moment and David Brook is go, trying to go from third to first oh and he almost wipes out the championship leader there and in doing so they both stay on but he's just had to wobble his way around he's lost a couple of places up and uh, James Shaw resumes in second there he is the championship leader from Manchester he resumes in second uh, we've got a rider there with uh, some levers on just coming in coming over to grab a can of drink and uh, watch from the side. But David Brook lost a bit of ground. He will be upset. He's uh, found it difficult all season long to keep tabs on James Shaw, despite the great start to the season that Brook had at Brands Hatch. But Brook has now fought his way back past Jamie Morris and up into third place. Jamie Morris there in fourth. Uh, always nice to have Jamie with us. He uh, comes to whatever rounds he can afford, basically. A photographer goes to a lot of the... Uh, BSB and MotoGP events getting some decent snaps but it's uh, James Shaw he has taken the lead then so just out of picture Shaw the championship leader has gone into the lead of this race and Don Gilbert now has got a bit of a job on to try and keep hold of James Shaw James has been consistently under lap record pace all weekend in fact he's already broken the lap record that was pre previously held by Ryan Gibson at 129.2. Well, these guys are currently into the 127s, so just shows how far this championship has come on in the space of a year. James Shaw, who had a bit of a nasty crash, actually, in the Sportsman Elite 600 race here at Rockingham. He just lost the front end going into Brook Chicane. But at the moment, he's uh, looking pretty good as they go into Chapman Curve. A bit of a wobble there for him. Left-hander here is Piff Path. You can just see from the front end there, just he is really pushing it. He's been 
so strong this season in this class and also in the pre-national 600s as has David Brook. Don Gilbert there having started the season out maybe finishing 7th, 8th, ninth. he's now become a regular on the podium so wonderful to have him um, up there fighting and as I mentioned before 5th in the championship at the moment but he will fight all the way until the final round of the season at Donington the rider from Crawley on the QED property Yamaha James Shaw on the Kawasaki from Manchester David Brook is doing well in the background despite that moment uh, over into Dean um, David who's from Bradford has just put in a decent lap time he's only about a tenth away from James Shaw's lap times there's Jamie Morris he's got himself ahead of Adam Clark Clark who won the Thundersport 500 championship last year is uh, he started out this year in the Superstock category for the Sportsman Elite 600s but found it quite difficult and thought, you know what, I've not got a national license yet so I might as well get as, uh, as much track time as possible. So he's entered this class, sort of gain experience and get used to the race craft but Jamie Morris just ahead of him, number 199, every time he turns up at Thundersport for the selected rounds that he can afford, he always puts in a decent performance, he's always nibbling at a podium. This the battle for second place then. James Shaw is cleared off out front. It's Don Gilbert there, coming under pressure from David Brook, who's managed to catch them all up. Further back there, you can see number 47, Frank Gallagher. Frank, who's uh, up in the top 10 of the championship overall. And that's 128, John Hunt, just being lapped. He's a, a novice, as you can see, with the orange bib on there. John, uh, his first ever time around Rockingham. Should quickly point out another newcomer to this uh, race as well, a bit further back. Uh, just behind Josh Hill and Paul Westerdale is uh, Dean Mulcahy, number 95. First ever race meeting. Not just first time here, first ever race meeting as there's a change for second and David Brook moves up into second overall. He won't catch James Shaw, but uh, he could be on for 20 points here as he gets past Don Gilbert. Fourth place for Morris, as I mentioned before. Adam Clark currently fifth ahead of Paul Westerdale, Josh Hill. Duncan, uh, sorry, Dean Malkahy. Will James is up in the top 10 as well, a rider that was featuring in the top five at the start of the season. Frank Gallagher, Jeff Conley, Asa Webb. Well, we saw Grace at the start of the show introducing it, and that's uh, Grace's brother, Asa. Or is it the other way around? Is uh, Grace Asa's sister? Oh. Asa's certainly having a good time out there. He's just battling away with uh, Charlie Oakland, and the pair of them started out in the Pretty Super Teens in 2008, so. They're continuing their battles as James Shaw puts a lap on number 18. That's Peter Hobday on the MV Augusta. Nice to have an MV Augusta out there. We've seen them out in the World Super Sport Series. Beautiful bike. Maybe not quite as competitive as, uh, as it could be. As there's Josh Hill, number 25. Josh, who's getting rather consistent now. Nice to see the rider from Sheffield. Him and his dad... Always got smiles on their faces in the paddock and uh, Josh is going well there and he is just behind the novice there with the orange bib, the newcomer to racing altogether, Dean Mulcahy. Good effort of this from Dean, considering he's not raced before and he's here at Rockingham for the first time, not the easiest of circuits to get used to and they go through the left right left flick at Brook Chicane onto the start finish straight but at the moment this is a Bit of a one-man band at the front. James Shaw just clearing off. A 127.7 is his fastest lap. David Brook in a safe second place now. He's just pulling away from Donald Gilbert, who still looks good for a podium. He's got about a seven-second lead over Jamie Morris. Uh, Jamie, as I mentioned before, number 199. Tracksideimage.com is his uh, photography business. So uh, log on. Get onto his website, take a look at a few of his snaps from the year. This is a good battle going on between Mulcahy and Josh Hill. Josh Hill, very young still. Time on his side. Mulcahy, a complete novice. It's a good battle. I would imagine both riders will be coming in with smiles on their faces. There's James Shaw, just coming up to some more traffic now. He's got to be a bit careful because we're at the end of the race and he doesn't want to do anything too silly as he comes up behind uh, Nigel Pitt, or Pitty as he's known as in the paddock. Onto the start finish straight we go. And James Shaw, number four. Nice and easy does it for him. A, a bit of a dodgy start. I think even he would admit that. He almost went grass tracking, but he's ended up as the race winner. He extends his championship lead. David Brook there, second place. Don Gilbert, third. 
after that great start. Jamie Morris is back with us and in fourth place ahead of Clark Westerdale Hill, who did get ahead of Mulcahy in the end. Will James ninth and Frank Gallagher in tenth place. There they are then on the podium, and Grace has caught up with all three. The position goes to Don Gilbert. Don, a good race for you there. We've been seeing you on the podium a couple of times. What do you think your aim is for this year now we're halfway? Well, the aim is to, uh, to definitely finish in the top, well, finish third in the, in the championship is the realistic goal. Second's probably, well, first definitely too far away. Second is probably too far away, so I'll, I'll try and go for third, I think, if I can. Just keep pushing away. Second position, David Brook, a good solid second position there. First was quite away, but then third was as well. Do you like it at Rockingham? Yeah, it's quirky. Some big, uh, big breaking zones. It tends to throw out a few uh, harsh moves, but yeah, I enjoyed it. And how was the race for you? Um, good, good. Um, had a good battle with uh, Donald Gilbert. Um, eventually gave in and let me come past eventually and managed to break away, but. Uh, I enjoyed it, good race. And winner James Shaw, you had a flying lead in, in that race and it's, it's only a matter of time before you take the championship. Yeah, hopefully. I just can't seem to get off the start this weekend. I've been like fourth off every single start, so try and work on that for the next one. You had a bit of a tumble in the elite race earlier. Has that affected you at all? It didn't, no. didn't look much? No, it was nothing. Just took the front, dead slow crash. Luckily, no damage to the bike, so... Oh, well done. Any sponsors to thank? Um, GNS Racing. Thanks to Tom for coming and helping me this, this weekend. It's been a great help. Well, join us again after the break and we'll bring you action from the RST Clothing Golden Era Superbikes and the Sparklight Racing Supersports. Welcome back to Rockingham. It's round six of the 2013 championships with Thundersport GB and time for the Golden Era Superbikes, a class that has grown from strength to strength since 2012. We have a decent grid here full of riders. Richard Blunt leads the championship. There he is, number 13, having a good battle this season with the likes of Rob Wilson and Chris Norris. Away we go then from the lights, the green flag at the back. It's a decent start there from Rob Wilson on pole position. Keep an eye out for the uh, Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport roll. We've got a bit of a crash at the start there. Now I can see that one of those is Ian Evans, number 96. Let's just see a replay of that in the background. Oh, some big air. Oh my word, and that, do you know what, that could have been horrific, it's good, oh that was horrible. Now it's actually a good thing that that happened towards the back, but uh, luckily both riders up and walking away. Nasty, nasty crash there between Dean Pollard and Ian Evans. Nice to see that they're both up and they've walked away, and the marshals have got a quick job on their hands now to get all that clear by the time these guys come back round. Richard Blunt, the championship leader, leads from Rob Wilson. 911 is Adam Sheriff. This is a circuit where the super sport machines, the less powered bikes, can actually have a nibble at these superbikes because there's plenty of twist and turny bits so keep an eye out for Sheriff just behind Sheriff is Nick Williamson so he's also out there on the Honda SP1 and Rob Wilson up the inside of Blunt there both of those riders on uh, Kawasaki ZX7Rs and then Adam Sheriff in third on one of the first um, Yamaha R6s, the first built Yamaha R6s, the new ones obviously not eligible and then they've got an SP1 Honda just behind them in Nick Williamson and it looks like Ryan Strafford and Rick Owen are fighting away on another couple of R6s just behind them. Lee Longdon out there on the Ducati uh, 748, he leads the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport points overall, look out for him, number 21, the red Ducati and, uh, and then behind Lee, there should be a bit of a battle forming between the likes of Chris Fink, Sam Nicholson, Mick Everett, Jamie Hitter. Oh, and Rob Wilson has gone down. Oh, no. And that's a Rob Wilson who's chasing Richard Blunt for the championship has lost the front end. And that was a typical front end loss as well. His head tucked under the bike with him. Nice to see he's up and OK, but he really is just gifting a load of points to Richard Blunt at the moment. Blunt, who... He's winning a lot of races at the moment, full of confidence. He really does seem to suit this Kawasaki ZX7R. He's been over 
across uh, overseas with this bike and been winning championships all the way through Europe. So really is in the groove at the moment. Looking relaxed, looking calm. Also races in the Thundersport 500 Championship, which demands a completely different ride, riding style. So a busy weekend for someone like Richard Blunt, who came into this weekend leading the Golden Era Superbike Championship by well over 50 points. There is uh, 911, Adam Sheriff, Nick Williamson there in third. So Sheriff leading the Supersport race as it stands. Nick Williamson third on circuit, but second in class. Behind these guys, we've got, then got another uh, tasty fight going on between Strafford and Owen. Both of those fighting it out for second and third in the Supersport class. And because of Rob Wilson going down, that now means that Jamie Hitter, uh, number 10, is up ahead of Mick Everett and is currently on for a podium. Uh, good old Jamie, a rider that uh, I used to actually pit board for back in uh, the late 90s. He's uh, come back for a play. The leathers are a bit of a squeeze. He'll tell me off for saying that. But uh, it's good to have him back out there. And considering he's never seen Rockingham before, the moment, as things stand, Jamie is on for a podium on the THR Kawasaki. There's Nick uh, Williamson. He's moved up ahead of Adam Sheriff on circuit. But those guys racing in completely different classes. And Nick obviously got his eyes pinned on Richard Blunt out front. And look at this look. Just coming into the tight and twisty section here at Tarzan and the nimble R6 is able to go all the way around the outside of the big and bulky Honda SP1 which should now make it its uh, advantage known on the straights so blunt it is that leads number 13 that's uh, the sheriff number 911 in second rider from Barnsley in his first year with Thundersport GB Nick Williamson uh, just behind him great sportsman always uh, working hard in the paddock and uh, nice to see him up in the top two or three and he's definitely going to capitalize from uh, the fact that Rob Wilson's not in this race in fact he's he's fifth in the championship he's also going to capitalize from the fact that Ian Simpson's not here so he'll move ahead of him in the championship and Chris Norris well he's not out racing now I haven't had a chance to catch up with Chris I've seen him from a distance and he's limping so I'd imagine he's had a big off somewhere uh, before today's racing and can't get out there, which will be frustrating because Chris Norris has looked really on it the last few rounds. So it's Blunt that leads. Sheriff second. Sorry, Nick Williamson second. Sheriff third. There is Rick Owen, number 35. Currently fourth on the circuit, second in class, just ahead of Ryan Strafford. And then a bit further behind these guys, you should be able to see the lime green Kawasaki of the hitman hitter but uh, this fight here between Owen and Strafford these two have actually been battling away for Super Sport 600 points for a few rounds now interesting to see that Lee Longdon is uh, so far behind these guys Lee is uh, without a shadow of a doubt a regular podium visitor and more often than not he's on the top step just struggling a little in this race to get that to caddy down one of the cones has been uh, lodged out of the way and pushed onto the circuit there not quite sure why that is but the riders managed to dodge all of that but uh, i tell you what the sheriff here on the yamaha r6 is doing his very best to try and close in on that kawasaki zx7r of richard blunt and whilst it wouldn't make an awful lot of difference to sh uh, to sheriff in terms of the the overall points what it would be is a huge scalp because richard blunt you'd expect to win this on the ZX-7 and we've not yet had a race where a 600 has won now there's a rider walking back there not quite sure who that is I'm afraid and there's a bit of ah yes I am that's Dean Pollard Dean is just giving a little wave over to Ian Evans and those are the two riders that were involved in that uh, rather nasty incident on the start finish line a moment ago so uh, nice to see that they're both up giving each other a cuddle and they'll be out for the next race. This fight continuing at the moment for the Super Sport second and third place between Ricky Owen and Ryan Strafford. And uh, at the moment, Strafford has got himself ahead of Ricky Owen, so Strafford on for 20 points and uh, a nice trophy. Lee Longdon is a bit further back. In fact, I say a bit further back, he's about 15 seconds behind these guys at the moment. Uh, Jamie Hitter still in seventh place on circuit. He's on in line for a 
His first trophy in what? Cool. Darren even suggest how many years it's been since he's picked up a trophy. Probably a good decade. But uh, we'll wait and see. Meanwhile, at the front, Richard Blunt it is that leads this race overall. He's got company, though. The Yamaha R6. Certainly from Yentwood onwards is just closing up on Richard Blunt. Blunt will have the advantage where it matters on the start-finish straight, so he should be able to hold on to this, but nothing's guaranteed in this sport. Nick Williamson has just been dropped slightly. He's got a bit of a lonely race on his hands now. He's about seven or eight seconds further back. Uh, he's got to be a bit careful, though, because Strafford and Owen are closing up on him. So here we see some decent lines, looking very calm and collected there. Richard Blunt out front, and then a rather aggressive style of the Sheriff desperately trying to get a super sport bike on the overall top step for the first time ever in Thunder Sport GB but this will give him a big boost of confidence Sheriff he was uh, oh let's have a look we're looking at something like 170 180 points behind Lee Longdon coming into this event but the checker flag is out and he's not going to do it in terms of beating Blunt but he is going to take the win so the two riders you see on your screen have won their separate classes Blunt extends his championship lead in the Golden Era Superbike. Sheriff closes in a little bit on Lee Longdon in the Golden Era Super Sport. Williamson third, Stratford fourth. You see there uh, Ricky Owen up there just behind Stratford. Jamie Hitter seventh, he does take a podium. Mick Everett in eighth, Chris Spink in ninth, and Sam Nicholson in tenth place. So the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport points, Lee Longdon takes uh, a massive lead into Anglesey the next round. Ryan Strafford there ahead of Chris Spink. Rick Owen climbing up the ladder there. Fifth place ahead of Sam Nicholson, Davey, Wael, Docker and Evans. And in the Golden Era Superbikes we head to Anglesey. A nice comfortable advantage there for Richard Blunt over Rob Wilson. Nick Williamson third, Chris Norris fourth, Ian Simpson fifth ahead of Plain Everett, Dieterman, Sean Goldsmith and the absent Lee Reevely. There are the Golden Era Super Sport winners there. Let's have a word with the Sheriff. Winner of the Super Sport race, Adam Sheriff, but you came second in the race overall. That You were really pushing to catch Richard for the win there. Yeah, yeah. That to be honest, I missed the last lap flag. I must have been a little bit late putting it out. I was, I was on him earlier on, but I'd seen him have a couple of moments and it was like, oh, do I, I don't I? So it was just, it was close. I would have had a go if I'd have been close enough, but a bit of me says, you know, I did the right thing anyway. And now let's catch up with the overall championship leader, Richard Blunt. Winner of the Superbike race, Richard Blunt. It's brilliant to see you back here on the podium, on the top step. It's been a while since you got your last win. Yeah, we uh, had a bit of a bad day yesterday. Lots of little changes to make here and there, but uh, just didn't seem to be able to get on the pace. But uh, yeah, it was, it's nice today to be uh, being hunted by the rest of the pack. But Adam was just on fire today. Every corner I could hear his bike, he was hunting me down. But uh, yeah, excellent riding. Just glad I managed to fend him off. A brilliant race. Any sponsors to thank? Yeah, as usual, we've got loads of people helping us out. Uh, thanks to Rockall, the supplying us the all for this, uh, the race series for this year. Uh, Portico Sport, DB Telecoms, Roger Null, who's bought us a new set of leathers. I'll be wearing, for hopefully, for the next set of races. Big thanks to him. Uh, my dad, Eric at Equa Motorcycles, Dan and Pierce with sorting out the bike and everything. And uh, I think that's everyone. Well done to Richard. Join us again after the break, and we'll bring you race two from the Motodex Pre National 600s. Welcome back to part three of Thunder Sport Plus here from Rockingham. Time for the second Motodex Pre-National Sport 600 race. And, uh, well, unfortunately, championship leader James Shaw not made it onto the grid. Now, I, I don't know if he came, well, he certainly came off in the Sportsman Elite 600 race. Whether there's a problem with his bike or he's slightly injured, not sure. Big opportunity, though, now for David Brook, who effectively inherits first place but still starts from second there's also a couple of other gaps on the grid where riders have fallen but it's another good start from Don Gilbert on the Sky Blue Yamaha R6 but David Brook who's second overall in the championship does make it through 
He has the advantage ahead of Don Gilbert this time and David Brook would be disappointed if he finishes this race anywhere else other than the top step now that James Shaw has gone. Shaw's lead in the championship is still pretty solid and David Brook, oh my word, don't go over there. That's not grippy at all. Stay on the black stuff, David. Almost ending his chances of winning straight away. How he's managed to hold on to first place overall, I'm not quite sure. So it's Brook the leads from Don Gilbert. There's a bit of shuffling going on for third and fourth between uh, Jamie Morris and Adam Clark. Is that in there? Looks like also a good start from uh, our rookie, um, Dean Malkahy. So we'll keep an eye out for him. In fact, is that him in third place? Dean Malkahy, number 95. We'll have a look as they go into Tarzan. Yes, it is. He's up ahead there of Jamie Morris. Now, Jamie Morris is uh, actually racing here with a bit of an injury he picked up from a, an earlier crash. It's really giving him some trouble. Now, he'll be going off for an x-ray immediately after this race, I'm sure, but either way, he, he did just point out to me that there was a few issues with, uh, with his wrist. He said that he'd give it a go on the warm-up lap and see how he gets on, but uh, Jamie Morris there in third place, number 199, sorry, fourth place, uh, just looking to try and get himself on the podium, but currently in fourth place, but he is riding injured. A bit further back, Josh Hill is having a decent race. Asa Webb got off to a beautiful start, number 80. Um, really got off the line very well indeed. Charlie Oakland's up in the top 10 or 12 as well, but it's David Brook that leads. He's just settled himself down after that monster moment on the exit of Dean Hairpin. There's Jamie Morris, number 199 struggling with that injury he's up behind that rookie what a performance that is um, from Dean Mulcahy and that's a name certainly to remember there's Asa Webb what a star that is from Asa the yellow and black uh, Suzuki GSX-R600 number 80 Asa Webb flying this would be his best finish so far there's Will James number 139 out there on the R6 and is there a challenge for the lead oh and David Brook well, there are various lines you can take into Tarzan. David went for the sort of quick one lap line, but what that does do is opens the door and Don Gilbert almost stepped inside and wiped the pair of them out. But as it is, Brooke and Gilbert remain on the bike. They had a good race in race one for second place overall, but this is a bit different. This is for 25 points and the race win. James Shaw can only watch and some excellent drive out of Brooke. Chicane there from Don Gilbert, and he does take the lead ahead of David Brooke. Brooks lap times when he's easily capable of getting into the 127s is what's really interesting about this is these guys when they've been chasing James Shaw they've been in the 127s they're racing for the race win between each other and they're down into the 129 so oh and Gilbert's gone down down into Dean Hairpin and Gilbert has kissed goodbye to any chances uh, that's Brooks just having a look over his shoulder well he must be Wait, I won't throw on that. <laughs> yeah, Gilbert, that's uh, just sheer frustration. When James Shaw's not in a race, you know that you've got a good chance of winning. And he had just as good a chance of winning this as David Brook did. But David Brook, well, he's had a, a couple of lives there, hasn't he? He was almost chucked off the bike on lap one. And now his closest rival for this race has gone down. That's pushed uh, this man up a place, Asa Webb. Looking really aggressive, looking a lot better and more comfortable on that Suzuki. He's up into the top seven now, so great job there by Acer. There's Jamie Morris. Well, that crash from Gilbert has pushed him up into third. What it means is the rider up ahead of him is in his rookie weekend as a motorcycle racer. He's on, odds on here to pick up his first ever podium. Unbelievable. Paul Westerdale there in all, the all black is in fourth place. Josh Hill, number 25 there. The blue and yellow color scheme is up into fifth place. So some solid points on offer for all of these riders. As we see further back there, number 10 and 111. Number 10 is Michael Dexter, and number 111 is Andrew Bates. And so, uh, well, the name Dexter um, should be familiar to those of you in this championship, because uh, it is his uh, company that sponsors the series. So uh, he's having a good ride of it. There's a rider down there, just on the edge of uh, the Brook Chicane. That looks like Jeff Comley, who's taken a tumble. Jeff was on for some decent points. Another rookie, as you can see there from the vest. There's Paul Westerdale, currently in fourth place. Paul, who has been around for most of the season so far, he's up in the top uh, three of the championship. But uh, So he'll be actually quite relieved to see that Don Gilbert's gone down the road because Gilbert was closing in on him overall. Josh Hill, a former super teen rider that is just getting used to life on a 600. Quite a 
a transitional move that just like um, Charlie Oakland she moved from a prettier super teens onto a 600 also and then just behind these guys is Asa Webb and Asa I've got to point out he did start out in a prettier super teens he did have a go on a 450 but um, he had a few injuries and he actually had probably a good year off the bike altogether. So he's got back on it and he really is flying at the moment. This is the battle though for fourth and fifth place. Meanwhile, out front, David Brook is just putting a, a bit of a gap on the rest of the pack. As we see uh, David Scott having a decent battle there with Andrew Bates. Number 70, sorry, it's not um, 71 David Scott. That's Nick Barnes, number 79. Nick is up into 10th place then, as he's got company, is that, um, sorry, Andrew Bates is 111 and Nick Barnes is 79, get it right Steve, as they come down into the Brook chicane, they're battling for 9th and 10th place, this is the fight for 2nd overall, Brook is a couple of seconds up the road, Malke is on for his first ever podium and Jamie Morris, well, I would imagine that the adrenaline rushing through him at the moment is uh, just taking away a bit of that pain, but it'll still be there because Morris is quicker than this he can lap quicker than this and he'll be desperate to try and get himself up there as long as he's on the podium I'm sure he won't mind too much he's got to remember to thank his mum on the podium he missed out last time so remember to thank your mum Jamie as uh, we see there a quick glimpse of uh, 47 Frank Gallagher just having a decent race with uh, Asa Webb that the battle for six and seven so if Asa can get past Frank Gallagher he's on for a top six finish there's Josh Hill in fifth this championship, as I mentioned before, a series for riders that are yet to attain the national race license. They can enter the Sportsman Elite 600s if they want double the track time, but it is a far more competitive series. So, much like a Rookie 600 championship, this. But the checker flag goes out, and David Brook, well, he might not have won with James Shaw on the circuit, but he'll take that. 25 points and a win and a good effort from him and despite the moment that he had the big moment he had on the exit of Dean Hairpin he picks up the win Dean Mulkey what an effort from him in his rookie race weekend Jamie Morris is on the podium good for Jamie Paul Westerdale fourth Josh Hill fifth Asa Webb well done there sixth place there Frank Gallagher Will James Charlie Oakland in the top ten also and Andrew Bates So the points heading into Anglesey, James Shaw with a huge lead still, but David Brook has just eaten into it slightly, he's taken a bite out. Westerdale still in third place, Don Gilbert in fourth, and a Clark James, Gallagher, Hill, Charlie and Michael Tustin. So there is Brook, Mulcahy and Morris all on the podium, and let's hear from Grace. Third position, Jamie, a really good race there. How did you find it? Uh, it was good. It, it, it's been a long weekend. Like, I fell off in the elite race yesterday and bashed my hands up a bit. So the rest of the weekend's been a bit of a, a struggle after that. But with a few, obviously, people not starting that race, I sort of gifted third. But long weekend has sort of come out all right. Oh, you worked your way to the top. It was well deserved. Any sponsors to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my dad, my mum, my sister, my wife who's at home. Uh, Gavin Sean and MSG um, and anybody else who's, who's helped me out. Second position Dean, again a good race for you there, you're fighting your way up to the top. Yeah I loved it, um, it's my first ever race meeting so really happy with what I've achieved. Definitely a really good result, any sponsors to thank? I know, just myself <laughs> at the moment yeah and um, I'd like to thank David who's in first, uh, third place, um, he's had a really helped me out this weekend, I've never met him before so there's a great help. First position, David Brook, a win for you there, really, really good result. Tell us about, you were battling with Don, but did you see, did you see yeah, his crash? Yeah, um, I tried to clear off, but he, he looked like he was ready for a race, obviously, before we started. <laughs> um, come past me and I just thought I'll just wait and see see how he rides and um, and see where I can pick him off. Um, and I think he just trailed too much brake into the first chicane and took the front and... and uh, Obviously, I cleared off from there on in, so, yeah. Shame James Shaw couldn't um, be on the grid. Might have had a battle on my hands, and might not. He might have cleared off, I don't know, but enjoyed the weekend and put some good times in, obviously some respe respectable times, and uh, 
very happy. A really good result. And will we see you at Anglesey? You will see me at Anglesey. And what do you think to that track? Have you been there before? Uh, I've not raced there. Um, looks good. Windy. Um, see what happens. See what happens. Any sponsors to thank? Yeah, everyone on my leathers. Um, Phil Beckworth. Couldn't do it without him. Absolutely fantastic mechanic. Um, mum and dad, girlfriend Hayley, uh, Cindy. Um, and anyone who shows any interest, it's great. Well, don't go anywhere in the final part. We've got a corker of a race for you. The JHS Racing Super Twins and Formula 400s. Welcome back to Rockingham for the final part of Thundersport Plus, the JHS Racing Super Twins and Formula 400s, a class which allows these brilliant Aprilia RRV 450s and, uh, well, guess what? They've locked out the front row. The man to watch, realistically speaking, is David Allingham. He and Daniel Frew, who's on the second row there, just to the right in the blue and yellow, number 66 on the Kawasaki 650. Those two riders have been really fighting it out for the championship overall, but don't think for one minute that David Allingham's going to clear off, despite the fact that he's got the whole shot there, because the other riders around him really have been putting on a show for us this season. These races have been absolutely epic. But it is the Irishman, David Allingham, that has the advantage. There's an interesting shot for you. David Allingham gets his right knee out, ready for a left-hander. Um, <laughs> certainly very Irish, David, as he exits Dean and heads down into Yentwood. A very, very classy rider is David Allingham. He leads his championship. He leads his own a pretty 450 championship. And uh, that looks like Lewis Rollo just tucked up behind him. Yes, it is. Number eight, Lewis Rollo there. The young Scotsman, the reigning a pretty super team champion. Ben Luxton third. Ross Twyman there in fourth place. Capable on his day of winning any race. So the top four all bunching up. All a pretty 450s. In fifth place is Daniel Freer. Exper slightly more experienced than these guys as there's a change for the lead. And Lewis Rollo goes up the inside of David Allingham. Lewis, uh, oh, in fact, where's Lewis Rollo just gone? He went wide and uh, he's managed to cut back. He's lost a bit of ground there. So David Allingham does take back the lead. Lewis Rollo obviously moved up into the 450 class this year, having won the 125 Super Team class last season. It's just taken him a couple of rounds to begin with to get used to things. And then he had a massive off at Donington Park, got himself concussed, missed a day's racing. And then by the time we'd got over to Cadwell Park, he, he hadn't quite sorted it out just yet. And from there, it's all started happening for him again. And the talent is back. And Lewis Rollo, a really, really fine specimen of a rider. And there he goes. He's recovered and he's up into the lead. But this just what you're seeing here is what we've seen all season long over every lap. Dust ups for the podium. Lewis Rollo leads from David Allingham. It's Ben Luxton third, Ross Twyman fourth, Daniel Freer fifth. That's Louis Dawson in sixth place, number 34. Louis, who's having a very good weekend here at Rockingham. He obviously enjoys the circuit layout here. Uh, look out for the uh, 400s also a bit further back. Um, Joe Sheldon Shaw is having a good weekend on the Kawasaki ZXR 400. Adam Goodyear is out on circuit as well. Ozzy Mady, of course, the championship leader. Uh, Rob Pragnall. A regular with Thunder Sports, so keep your eyes pinned for those uh, zippy little 400s out there. And a couple of the mini twins also. Dave Butler, number 91, on a Suzuki 650. Uh, Lee Wainwright, number 44. Alex Platt, 43. Will Holland, 93. Nathan Hutchinson, 47. Nice to have uh, Nathan back with us. Ollie Brocklesby, a former super teen, also out there on a mini twin. But at the moment, this is the fight for the overall race win. And it's between Lewis Rollo and David Allingham. Lewis Rollo has the advantage. Allingham there, happy in second place. In third there, Ben Luxton, number nine. Ben, when he first moved on to the 450, he was a bit quiet, I have to say. He was finishing sort of seventh and eighth. Very respectable, but not quite the edge to be able to fight with these guys. Well, this year, he's gone under the uh, JDF banner. John Davis, who's brought on so many decent riders across super teams and 450s. And uh, he's managed to get his hands on Ben Luxton. And whatever's happened, whether it's just a general boost of confidence or not, Ben, uh, ben has really, really improved as a rider. He's come on strong. And here he is fighting it out at the front of this race. David Allingham it is that leads. 
Lewis Rollo in second place, but Rollo here fighting. What a strange line that is from Rollo, looking to try and sweep around the outside. That will give him the inside line, though. Out of Tarzan, they're side by side, these two. Two very different riding styles. David Allingham, far more of a relaxed riding style than Lewis Rollo. Lewis, of course, pint-sized in height, so uh, he can get himself tucked in without any problem at all. Ben Luxton still in third, but whilst these two trip each other up at the front, it's just allowing a few other riders into the frame. There is, in the background, Ross Twyman and Daniel Freer. Louis Dawson has got past the pair of them and is flying up at the moment into fourth place. And there's Daniel Freer on the Kawasaki 650, just going ahead of Ross Twyman on the Aprilia. Ross having a bit of trouble at the moment with uh, his Aprilia, just not quite running in perfect form. And since Donington Park, I mean, Donington was the, the weekend of his life, but since then it's just been very slightly off the boil but on his day as i mentioned capable of almost anything and there he is just behind daniel freer that looked like george stanley just on the edge of uh, the tire wall there looking on and we lost george in the opening lap i think so that must be george stanley who's just watching the rest of this race keeping a cautious eye on things as they progress but uh, it's lewis rollo the lead the reigning super team champion what a career he's uh, going to go on to have he's won a couple of 450 races now there's Daniel Freer an ex-British championship front runner in the stock 600 class this year riding in not just this championship but also the sportsman elite 600s and further back Joe Sheldon Shaw is currently leading the 400s uh, there is number 34 Louis Dawson up into fourth place without a shadow of a doubt the best weekend we've seen Louis had have further back there that's uh, number 55 Alberto Flores our Spanish rider looks a bit like Mark Marquez actually that's Mr Flores in the paddock you have to a double take certainly as you're wandering around the paddock and you bump into Alberto but uh, there is Dave Butler actually leading the mini twins a couple of a prettier 450s just wedged between himself and the likes of Alex Platt and Lee Wainwright Reese Hutchinson is up there Keenan Armstrong Cameron Lee's up in the top 10, Harry Coomber, Gideon Thomas, Alex Baker, just out of picture. We've not really had a proper glimpse of them just yet, but they are up in the top 10. And Allingham with that uh, new sponsorship for 2013, the Be More Aprilia. They're just coming around to lap there, Rob Pragnall. He's got the advantage. Ben Luxton, sorry, Lewis Rollo still leads. Allingham is second, that's Ben Luxton third, and Louis Dawson closing in on a lot of them. They're lapping... Uh, Pragnall, Goodyear and Connor Wheeler at the moment as they head into the Brook Chicane. Not long to go in this one. It's a pretty close race, this. Lewis Rollo at the moment has the advantage. Lap times, well, they're all 129.3s, 129.4s, so they cannot be separated in lap times as they come on to the start-finish straight here to complete another lap. David Allingham thought about the look up the inside. The problem is with that first uh, sector into the chicane, unless you're already level with the rider going into it, you can't afford to make a move. David Allingham carried so much corner speed through there though. He's got the advantage and as they go into Dean Hepin, oh, he was alongside Lewis Rollo. Rollo tipped in anyway, nearly cut off the front end of David Allingham, but Rollo means business here. Dean, uh, ben Luxton is still there in third place. He's still in the hunt. We've not seen his nose out front yet, but the way this is going, he could actually just hang on there and win. And Louis Dawson really looking menacing in fourth place. This is definitely the best we've seen of him. He's come on a long, long way. Rockingham, he was pretty strong here last season. So he obviously enjoys the layout of the circuit. There is the uh, wonderfully talented Talon Skills Piggins. Unfortunately, a rider that was paralyzed, but miraculously here racing. Uh, thanks to Dave Stewart and co. But uh, if you've not heard of Talon, go and the web uh, internet just type in the bike experience and you'll find out a bit more about him this race however still going on and Lewis Rollo taking a wide line there to try and get some good drive under the start finish straight but that allows David Allingham alongside him and they're coming up to the start finish straight and there is not a lot to split these two as they go across the line the checkered flag out and it is Lewis Rollo that takes it just by six hundredths of a second ahead of David Allingham a great race there for Lewis Rollo then he beats Allingham Ben Luxton does take third, but it's a solid third. He only finishes just under three tenths behind 
uh, Allingham and Rollo. And Louis Dawson's only eight tenths behind the overall winner in fourth. Twyman finishes in fifth, ahead of Daniel Freer, Alex Baker, Gideon Thomas, Harry Coomba, and Cameron Lee. So the points heading into Anglesey, David Allingham, the championship leader, almost a 60 point lead now ahead of Daniel Freer, Ross Twyman third, Rollo fourth, ahead of Luxton Baker, Jamie Thackeray, George Stanley, Dave Butler and Luke Thackeray. So let's have a look on the podium, there's Joe Sheldon Shaw, the Formula 400 winner. Winner of the Formula 400 race, Joe Sheldon Shaw, your first podium at Rockingham. You must be over the moon with that result. Definitely, I didn't expect it at all. Uh, just get well soon to Sam as well, because of yesterday. And Dave Butler wins the Mini Twins. Let's hear from him now. And winner of the Digital Mini Twins, Dave Butler. A good win for you there. Did you have some battles on the way? Yeah, yeah, it was a close race. Um, myself and Lee and Alex were close enough, and uh, Ozzy and a couple of the Aprilias as well. So it was tight enough at the end, and Ozzy fell off. He kind of gave us a bit of an extra place, but um, it was a good close battle, so happy enough. Any sponsors to thank? Um, yeah, my um, Uncle Des, Spears Racing, uh, Quinn, Quinn Agri Services, Murray Motorsport, and uh, Dennis Lane Lynch and the Cliffords. They uh, look after me all weekend, every weekend, so thanks very much to them. That was a close race between you and Dave, but you managed to pull through in the end. Yeah, I know. Well, um, my pit board was saying there was only two of us in our group. Then there was four, and then it just built up. But um, David pushed me all the way, and it was a brilliant race. He came, he tried to get past at the hairpin, and um, I managed to close the door on him. Then he tried at the last corner, and I lost the back end. And then he just got that wee drive, but I just managed to get to the line before him, so it was really good. Excellent. Any sponsors to thank? Um, I'd like to say a big thanks to Prentice Coaches for paying for our fuel and um, sponsorship as well. Family, friends, my dad and Alan for having the bike going really well. Ian Newton for giving us the bike in competition. Um, Thundersport, Marshalls, just everybody. Well, that's it from us here at Rockingham. Join us again next month where we travel to North Wales and Anglesey. See you then.